All right, good afternoon. Abari. In Swahili, you say Missouri. All right, so um, I think that uh, if we're going to preserve these last wild places, we need to have a sense about how they were formed. And we're talking about big systems here. We're talking about huge systems that took millions of years to form. Now, as they say, if you don't know where you're coming from, then you don't know where you're, at, where you're going. All right, so what I want to do is I want to take you on a safari. I want to take you on a safari to Africa, but it's going to be a safari like none that you've ever had before, because this is going to be a time safari. I brought my time capsule. Come on in. Strap your belt. We're going to be moving fast. Right? So, um, on our safari, we have a few choices of places where we can go back in time and look at systems that can tell us about how these uh, wild places in Africa were formed. We can go to Uganda, we can go to Tanzania, we can go to Ethiopia, we can go to, uh, to Kenya. I'll choose Kenya, partly because I come from Kenya, but partly because there's a place called Turukana, Lake Turukana region, where we have an incredibly well-preserved record of uh, just about, you know, you could track human history from present all the way back to the time the dinosaurs existed. Okay, so the record there is better than anywhere else in Africa. All right, so the first place I want to take you to in our capsule, we're going to land at a place called Napudet, 13 million years ago. And this place now looks like a lunar landscape. But back then, it was a large forest. There was a massive volcanic eruption. And what you're looking at here is, a this is remnant of these huge masses of volcanic ashes that are blanketing this surface for hundreds of uh, square miles. And so it's hot, it's dry, but if you can go back and imagine this used to be a forest. There were elephants, there were rhinos, there were apes. Doesn't look like anything like you, you, what you see today. And so in, uh, 2014, in 2014, September, I was out there with a the team scoring the surface to find any little bits and pieces of the evidence that we could, we're going to use to put together what life back then looked like. And at the end of a very long day where we found no fossils whatsoever, one of my assistants on a smoking break spotted a fossil. We were happy to see it, a fossil of any kind. Now we got closer, we took a look, and we realized from just what we could see on the surface that what we had discovered was a skull of a primate of some kind. This is a, 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 a video from that very same day of discovery, the moment of discovery. This was the team back then. Actually, nobody wanted to go there. I, I, it took me a while to scramble a team together. All right, so um, the next day we came back, we excavated. It took us about three months to clean the fossil. And uh, by every bit of uh, exposure, we realized that we had something fantastic. But the teeth were all gone. The erupted teeth were all gone on the skull. But we could see that it was a baby. So I took it with me to France, to Grenoble. And we got it scanned with, uh, this is the synchrotron in Grenoble, the best imaging uh, system that you have anywhere in the world. You can peer about, just about into anything, no matter how hard it is. All right, so we took it out there. I spent 10 days. Uh, we scanned it. We have about two and a half terabytes worth of data. And we can look in the inside and see what is preserved in the inside. And this is really a remarkable fossil. Nothing like this has ever been found after 300 years of looking. This is the most complete ape uh, skull that's ever been discovered. So in the inside, you can see those green things there, uh, the semicircular canal, the balancing organs, and the cochlea, the hearing apparatus. We can see all the unerupted teeth. We can see the endocast. We're able to reconstruct hearing, balance, movement, 
diet, and we can say a, little, some, a few things about how uh, it developed. I saw it is a spectacular fossil inside and out, and we can then slice through the teeth, digitally that is, not physically, using modern technology, and we can blow them up and we can see the growth line on the teeth, and we can estimate that this baby, when it died, was about a year and two months old. So we have ourselves here an infant. We nicknamed it Alessi. Now Alessi is, um, belongs to a group that is a common ancestor to all human beings and apes altogether. So Alessi lived in this forest about 13 million years ago. We're gonna get back on our time capsule and I'm gonna take you to another spot in Turukana, a place called Buluk. At Buluk, we have uncovered fossils of elephants, I mean, tons of fossils of elephants. And we have found that there are five different species of elephants living in this place about 20 to 15 million years ago. Now we have three elephants left. That is a time in Africa where we had five different elephant species, and we also had five to six different species of apes all living in this forest. Now think about that. Five different species of elephants. Now, we're gonna fast forward, and we're gonna to come to the present. The Africa that you confront, the wild places that you confront back then, 20 to 15 million years ago, is very different from the wild places that we're familiar with. When we think about Africa today, we think giraffes, we think lions, we think uh, wildebeest migrations and things like that. But the Africa that we encounter back then, the Africa from 20, actually from 30 to about 5 million years ago, is a very different Africa. Rainforests, elephants, rhinos, a very, very different elephant, uh, a different environment. All these things that we are, uh, we are trying to conserve are actually not African. They're immigrants. They all came from Eurasia. The only mammal, the only large mammal that has been a constant that we're familiar with is the elephant. The elephant evolved and has always been in Africa, of course, they migrated to other parts of the world as well. So what we want to understand is how did we go from the Africa of then to the Africa of today? How did the ecosystems that we're trying to conserve today end up being what we see from what we know existed in Africa for a very long time? The clue is in a whale bone. So I'm gonna go back into the capsule and we're gonna to go to another site in Turkana called Loperot. In 1960s, an American paleontologist discovered a whale fossil, took it to Harvard, it disappeared. In the 80s, somebody realized that it was important. It was rediscovered. And the interesting thing about this whale is that Loperot, the place where that whale fossil was discovered, is 800 kilometers away from the Indian Ocean coast and 800 meters above sea level. What the hell is a whale doing out there? My tectonic experts calls it a whale of a problem. <laughs> now, the only way that whale gets up there is by swimming up a river. And the only way a whale can swim up a river and end up 800 kilometers away from the ocean, it can't be the kind of elevation you see today. So it tells us that this whole region in East Africa was much lower. And that since then, 17, from 17 million years up until now, the whole of the East African region, the whole of the East African plate is not only breaking away from the rest of Africa, but it's also being lifted up. And it is this uplift that we think has driven the climate change that led to the drying up of the forest, the opening up of grasslands, the migration of the mammals from Eurasia, and the origin of human beings. So we think that climate change played a major factor in making it possible for us to evolve. 
I have assembled a large team of scientists, 28. We're going to test this hypothesis. Stay tuned. But one thing we know is that our being here is improbable. It shouldn't have happened. But we've made it this far. But with the knowledge that we get from how the systems are created, a unity of purpose, the realization that we all come from Africa, I'm very confident that with our technology and together, I think we're going to make it. Thank you.